Hello, everyone. I'm going to wait about one more minute just to give everyone time to join, and then we'll, we will be getting started. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So today's webinar will be covering getting the most from year in fundraising as we move from 2021 into 2022. I will be your host. My name is Austin Story and I am the Community Development Manager here at Mighty Cause. My email is listed below, austin at mightycause.com if you would like to contact me after the webinar. And I'll also be reaching out to everyone that attended um, as well. So you'll have an email from me to contact anyway. Okay. So today's agenda, we're going to cover the following topics. First, transitioning from Giving Tuesday to end of year fundraising. And we're going to be covering going over, coming up with your end of year plan, and then setting a goal for your end of year campaign. Um, next, we'll be covering storytelling and how to make your page stand out donor communication focusing on planning for different audiences donor retention tools and also end of year matching and partnership strategies and then last i'll be covering some additional tools mighty cause can provide to assist you in your efforts okay so first we're going to talk about transitioning from giving tuesday into end of year fundraising now, the month of December is a key time for nonprofit organizations for fundraising. Um, a third of all charitable giving happens in the month of December. So this is a huge month, easily the biggest month out of the year for receiving donations. Specifically, 12% is gonna happen in the last three days of the year. So that last week is going to be crucial. And I will be mentioning that last week a lot as we kind of continue here, okay. So first, we're going to be talking about creating your end of year plan and strategy for your campaign. So there's a couple different ways you can go about this. But one thing to keep in mind is when you're coming up with your end of year campaign strategy, think back to what strategies were successful throughout the year. Now, this will be different for every organization, but really think about what campaigns you ran or any fundraising efforts you had in what specifically resonated with your donors. Maybe it was a specific campaign type, um, maybe it was specific marketing content, maybe social media was more active for you or email more marketing, but really think about what worked this year and lean on that as we move in the end of the year, because you know better than anyone how your donors respond to your communications and your campaigns. So first factoring in what's most successful for you will be very important in the structure of your campaign. Now there's kind of two common strategies for end of year campaigns, um, whether or not you participated in Giving Tuesday. So one strategy is if you had a Giving Tuesday campaign, you could potentially just roll that over as your end of year campaign. And so what I mean by this is instead of building an entire new campaign, if all your messaging is going to remain the same, you could just kind of edit the content on your Giving Tuesday campaign and continue to utilize that as the campaign for donors. Um, advantage to this is you have the same link, same campaign page. You're just still gonna want to edit kind of the branding to make sure they know you are transitioning into this end of year mode but you can kind of keep that campaign and utilize it for your end of year fundraising. Now, another strategy would just be to build an entirely new separate campaign 
Um, this also makes sense if you have an end of year campaign with a specific focus that differs from your Giving Tuesday campaign. So either strategy can work. Um, it's just two kind of different options for building out that end of year campaign. All right. Next, donor fatigue. So donor fatigue is generally a big concern for nonprofit organizations, but at this time of year, it's not as big a deal as you think. It helps to separate Giving Tuesday and end of year fundraising in your mind because Giving Tuesday is not, it doesn't cannibalize year in giving. So donors giving on Giving Tuesday does not remove them from your end of year fundraising. Really what it is, is that's a additional donation they're giving your organization. So most donors are not looking at Giving Tuesday as their end of year gift. It is a Giving Tuesday gift. And then they generally still plan on doing an end of year gift. So don't think about it in terms of, I lost these donors on Giving Tuesday. Many of them will be coming back for your end of year campaign. Um, keeping in mind, again, the last five days of the year, donation volume is huge and average gift sizes are larger. So it's very important to focus on this end of year campaign and not worry too much about donor fatigue from Giving Tuesday marketing to end of year. Um, these two fundraising periods really just kind of work together to increase charitable gifts to organizations overall. And you want to maximize this time because this is when more people are giving than any other part of the year. Okay. Now, next, it's going to be important to plan your campaign in phases. So the first phase is going to be post Giving Tuesday launch. And this is essentially the time period we are currently in. So this is where you're going to want to devise your strategy, create your campaign, start creating your marketing, and reintroducing your kind of campaign focus to donors. Now, once again, I mentioned the two strategies where you could continue a Giving Tuesday campaign or create a new one, but you're going to introduce what you're trying to do in this end of year time. This could mean adjusting language and marketing materials as you transition out of Giving Tuesday. Um, and this may mean setting new goals as well. So if you're utilizing an old Giving Tuesday campaign, you may want to set a new goal focused on end of year. And obviously, if you're building a new page, you will also be setting a new goal as well. Um, and towards year, year end goal, the goal gradient effect will kick in. And this, what that effect is, is as you get closer to your goal, donors are more motivated to donate because they want to be the ones to push you over the finish line. So that's also why it's important to set attainable goals, um, which I'll definitely be focusing on in a moment when I talk about the goal section as well. Right. So that is the first phase, which we're currently in, which is really just kind of strategizing, figuring out your plan and creating content. Now, phase two will be starting shortly and probably get started in the next week or so. This is going to be donor engagement. So this is going to be following up with and thanking Giving Tuesday donors um, and just donors that have donated this year and doing personal outreach to key groups of donors. If you have any large donors or key donors, this is the time to reach out to them, thank them for everything they've done this year, and also obviously make an ask for end of year donations. Now, there may be a slump during this donor engagement phase, and that's fairly common. The middle of December is not generally the most active time. It really starts to pick up towards the end. So this donor engagement period is key for engaging individuals and bringing them in the loop of what your organization is doing as you move in to that year in fundraising. So they're very aware of what is going on. Now, phase three is going to be the final week of the year. And there's no other way to describe it other than go time. So this is when you're gonna pull out all the stops, do all of your marketing efforts, everything on social media, save your best stuff for last and really communicate with them and get them to understand why your organization needs a donation. Um, also, generally speaking, Statistics are usually not a huge draw for donors, except at year end. So it's going to be very important you start calculating all the stuff you've done this year and really communicate that to donors. Everything you've accomplished, this is your time to share and also thank them and let them know what their donations have done for your organization. 
Um, so yes, once again, giving is going to spike that last week of the year. So don't be afraid to make a strong push. This is the time to do it. All right. So next, we're going to talk about how you should set a goal for end of year fundraising. Now, as with any fundraising campaign, specificity is going to be key. Uh, even at the end of the year, donors want to know exactly what their donation is supporting. So really think about what you want to gain from this end of year fundraiser. Are you filling a fundraising gap? Are you looking to kick off a new program in the next year or uh, potentially open a new location? These are gonna be important questions to ask because you wanna communicate with donors what this year end push is all about. Um, and it's gonna be important to communicate not just the financial goal, but that goal of what you're trying to accomplish. And it's gonna be very, it's, it's a tricky thing, but you really wanna balance between what you think is attainable based on your, donation, uh, your donor base and what your organization actually needs. So really trying to kind of figure that out because you want a goal you can reach, but you do also want to kind of shoot high because everyone knows you need X amount to, to accomplish what you're going to try and accomplish with this end of year fundraiser. Um, once again, you're going to really want to align that goal with your organization. So thinking about all of your goals for the next year. Um, maybe it's not as specific as opening in a location. Maybe you have kind of longer term goals. Either way, you're really making sure that is very, very clear to donors because they're going to want to know what their donation is doing specifically for your organization. Now, last when setting this goal, it's going to be important to brand your page, use visual cues to indicate transition. And what I mean by that is, you know, you should not be using Giving Tuesday marketing in December. You should have new end of year marketing. So having new content that's very, very targeted to this time of year and making that shift feel natural so donors know, okay, we're moving into giving uh, end of year mode from Giving Tuesday. And then once again, just let donors know the impact they make. So make that clear on your page. Definitely give a shout out to everyone what you've accomplished this year and how they made it all possible. Because without them, uh, you know, nothing really gets done. They're the ones that kind of fund all the great stuff that your organizations are accomplishing. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about telling a story with your fundraiser. Now, a month isn't that long in fundraising time, but this month, you're still going to need a lot of content to, to sustain your organization's marketing efforts. And you're going to kind of pull back on everything throughout the year. So this means stories, testimonials, photos, videos, infographics, pretty much anything you can pull that you think is going to be useful for marketing, you're going to want to use it all now. This is the time. Um, so telling a personal story as well, and that kind of goes to what I was just talking about. So this is the time of year to really let donors know what impact your organization has. So if you have any quotes from individuals you've helped, testimonials, photos, videos, a great thing that I think is a, a really good idea is if you can make a video that's kind of a montage of everything you've done this year, that really speaks to individuals, the impact that your organization has. Um, so just trying to pull everything you can and really using content that directly corresponds with what your organization has accomplished is going to be very important for this time of year. Um, also just doing a recap. So at the beginning of 2021, think back, what were you trying to do? What were your accomplishments this year? And what goals did you meet? Also, you could also point out what goals you had that maybe were not met and how you're going to focus on those in 2022. So kind of laying out how you met your roadmap in 2021 and also focusing on what your roadmap is for 2022. But just focus on that storytelling aspect because that's really what's going to resonate with people is understanding what your organization did this year and what you're planning on doing moving forward. Um, next, and this is something I'm going to mention probably over and over, is keep messaging consistent you really want a clear message that resonates across all your marketing content. So having a key tagline you're using over and over and a key call to action is gonna be very important. Just so it's very, very clear what the goal is for your fundraiser this year. 
um, as I mentioned, repetition is going to be very, very clear, uh, key. Okay. Next, how to make your page shine. So this is just talking about what the content should look like. So first, you'll want a strong cover photo or video, either one you're using, but it needs to grab attention and evoke emotion. So this is not the type of campaign where you just want to put your organization logo um, as your kind of banner image. You really want to use something that, that speaks to people. So any of the kind of photos I talked about from efforts you've accomplished this year, photos of your organization in action. That's kind of what we're talking about here. It's something that's very, very kind of eye-catching and really draws people into the page. Once again, clear call to action. Um, repetition is key and having succinct messaging that's very, very clear and not too wordy that aligns with your goals. So coming up with what your key phrase is gonna be throughout this campaign, you want it to be very, very clear. Next, customize donation suggestions. So um, you may or may not know, but on Mighty Cause, you can customize the donation levels on your form, and you can also add descriptions. So this is going to be very useful so that donors understand the different impact levels. So you can set different impact levels and add a description of an idea of what that will accomplish for the organization. Once again, donors want to know what their donation is doing. So when they actually get in that checkout and see that you've already kind of set some levels of recommended donations for them, it definitely helps them figure, figure out the level of impact their donation will make. Uh, once again, storytelling with images and words. Um, this is very, very important. You need to show and tell what your organization is doing. You can't lean too much on either. They need to work together to communicate the message you're trying to convey. And then last, just customizing your thank you page and your receipt to complete the story. So after that donors completed their donation, make sure your receipt speaks to what you were talking about in your campaign. So have it customized, specifically geared toward that end of your fundraising story that you're trying to tell. Um, and so that you can thank them accordingly. Next, donor communication. Um, this is going to be very, very important. So after you've kind of drafted, you know, your key message and you know the language you want to tell your story, you're going to make sure you want to message donors in the proper way. And so the big thing about this is going to be focusing on different audiences. So not all your donors interact the same. What we don't want to do for end of year fundraising is just send out one blanket email to your entire donor, ba donor base. That may resonate with some donors, but it may not with others, and it may not be the most effective strategy. So I'm just going to go over some common segments here. Obviously, every organization has their own segments, but these are common ones that I think resonate kind of broad to all organizations. So first, board members. Um, hopefully, they are giving year-round, but if they have not made a contribution yet, this is the time they should be. Um, this is also a great opportunity for them to send an emotional appeal to friends and family about why they've been chosen to be involved and volunteer for the organization. You know, why are they on the board? They can specifically do that and kind of reach their own networks to gather more donations. So definitely lean on your board members at this time. Next, monthly donors. Now, you want to be careful with monthly donors because they are already giving on a month-to-month -month basis. So definitely message them, thank them for supporting you all year round. But they're not donors you necessarily want to ask for a large donation from because they are frequently giving. So maybe they can give another end-of-year gift, but just be careful with that because you don't want to lose a monthly donor and you don't want to over ask because they specifically are giving on a monthly basis already. Uh, next segment, donors that gave this year. So obviously these are individuals that support your organization. They've given in the last year. So definitely reach out to them and reference their previous gift. If they gave on Giving Tuesday, reference that as well. And just use appropriate messaging to get them involved in that year-end gift mode as well. Donors that gave on Giving Tuesday, it kind of rolls into that 2021, but you can have specific messaging just for those donors as they recently gave. 
um, big thank yous to them and just talking about what your efforts are for end of year. Then last, donors that gave in 2020 that haven't given yet. Um, this is going to be a very important segment because you want to get these donors involved again and you want to engage them. So making sure these donors have very, very clear communication and you want a strong call to action. These are donors you really want to ask from because it has been over a year since they donated to your organization. So you can be most aggressive with this segment because they have not given in the last year. Um, so there is no worry of over communication, anything like that. And also keeping your messaging consistent across all of your platforms social media, email marketing, um, YouTube, your website, everything you're doing. And also, you know, thinking this kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier, what is most effective, do a bigger push on that. So for example, if more of your donors resonate with social media, that is where you should spend a majority of your marketing efforts. If it's email marketing, YouTube, vice versa, but try and engage all donors through different strategies because not everyone interacts in the same way. Okay. Next, focusing on donor retention. And so specifically here, we're going to be talking about the donor retention tool that you have on your account. So this is kind of talking about that segment of donors from 2020 that did not donate and how you can track that. So the donor retention tool will allow you to pull up a list of retained donors and unretained donors from 2021. Um, you can quickly find this in your dashboard if you go to your reports and then your retention report. Now, what you're gonna wanna look at is filter by, excuse me, year to date and then status not retained. So these are gonna be the donors from last year that have not come back. So they're not retained for this year. Consider personal outreach to the larger donors because the, you, want, you want those large donors to come back and customize messaging to all those unretained donors. This is also a way you could pull a list of those retained donors, which are the ones that have donated this year and just have different messaging for them since they've already donated. But track this project progress as you get closer to end of year. It's a very important thing for organizations to look at. Donor retention is so key to growing as a organization. End of year matches. So small or large, a end of year match can make a big difference and create incentive for donors. So when thinking of doing an end of year match, just think of who that match money could come from. Are there major donors you can major donors you can count on, um, or even a group of donors you know are willing to make a donation? Just figuring out where that money can come from and how you can create that match. It can be a huge motivator in the last week of the year when donors know that their donation is getting matched for your organization. Also, you don't need to stop at one. If you have the capability to have multiple matches have more than one. You could have one each day the last week. You could have them roll into each other. There's a lot of different options there. You could also try a new style of match, triple match, match based on donors, not donor, uh, not dollars. There's a lot of different flexibility with our match tool. So it doesn't need to be as simple as just a one for one match. Um, create dedicated match just for the last week or day of the year to add urgency. I would definitely recommend this is that last day of the year is going to be very, very active and you'll want to have something as an additional motivator. Next, use partnerships to amplify. So engaging in corporate or local partners can be very, very helpful in this end of year marketing strategy. Um, and if you have any relationships with organizations, definitely lean on those, communicate with them, Maybe you're running an event. Maybe they can be a sponsor. There's a lot of different things you can do, but I would communicate with them sooner rather than later so you can coordinate how they can assist you with this end of year fundraising. And if you don't have any or are looking for more partners, you know, ask board members for connections, look around, think about organizations that may have engaged with you in the past and just try and get them to participate because these partnerships can really bring new donors to your organization. Um, also ask existing corporate partners to activate employee giving or volunteering for your nonprofit as an additional motivation for their employees to participate in this process. 
Also, radio is a great way to reach a wide audience. So if you can uh, get a radio spot, that's also a great time. Or it is a great time to do that as well and kind of reach donors through that method. Great. Um, last, just some additional tools that you can consider for end of year. Um, Mighty Cause does have an advanced plan with some additional tools, and there's a two-week free trial of this. You can definitely test them out. So if you don't have a donor management system, we do have an onboard one that you can utilize to manage donors, create segments, email messaging, manage volunteers. You can also have a branded donation page and form for your website, which is just nice as a direct portal for them to donate through. And then we also have data integrations with Salesforce. MailChimp, Slack, Google Analytics, and thousands of others as well. So this can be useful for data flow, donor collection. You're able to generate your own custom fields on checkouts, add surveys, custom brand those receipts. And then also something big for end of year, you could run a text to give campaign with your text to give tool. So if you're doing any live fundraising, it's a great piece you can have at a live um, campaign so donors can text right in their donation. Great. Then last, I will just leave it up to any questions that anyone has for me. And uh, thank you all for attending. Anytime, guys. Thank you as well. Yes, registrants can obtain a recording. Um, you should get a recording of this following the, the webinar. Um, good messaging to folks who gave on Giving Tuesday, but are hoping that you will continue to give for end of year fundraising. So, the messaging that I would think about using for end of year is it, it kind of goes back to this whole conversation about strategy, but what are you trying to accomplish for end of year and where are the gaps in the organization? So definitely, you know, thanking them for giving Tuesday, but just kind of letting them know what you need for end of year and what you're going to do with it as well. Um, but basically just kind of communicating with them your year-end goals and how those are separate from Giving Tuesday as well. How do you convince your board chair to talk about board giving? So board members can be hard to engage, but it is end of year and this is kind of the biggest time for donations. So I would just communicate with them that all the board members should be a part of this process. Um, there's a reason they're a part of your organization. So just kind of try and communicate with them that you need their support at this time because having the board involved is very, very helpful, um, especially if they can donate and also if their family can donate because there's a reason they're a part of the organization. So they should be you know, participating in the donation um, arena as well. Okay, for those of us that are just born. Gotcha. So this is a question um, about building a formal giving program. Um, they're just kind of getting started. 100% volunteer, one part-time development manager, very inactive board. So Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, because you're asking about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising can be tricky to get started. Now, if you have a number of volunteers in an inactive board, I may suggest that if you specifically want to run peer-to-peer, -peer, you could just start a smaller peer-to-peer -peer campaign with all the volunteers if they're engaged. Now, you'd have to have them engaged and each person is willing to market their page and maybe they get their family involved. But usually what organizations do for the first peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser is it's more kind of an internal peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. You know, you get your volunteers involved, 
and they are part of that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising process. And then as you grow, you can kind of, as you get more, you know, supportive donors, they can get involved in that process. Um, also though, if that is not foreseeable, like if you don't think you could get everyone engaged in a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, that's completely fine. Then you may just wanna go with the traditional crowdfunding approach. Um, just kind of having a singular page with a donate button that everyone can share out. It really just depends. Peer-to-peer um, -peer, though, obviously is more complex because there's more pages, but there's a larger reach. So really just kind of weighing what you think is possible within your organization. But if you're unable to run a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You can still have strong messaging and utilize a singular campaign to receive donations for end of year. Um, both strategies are successful. And peer-to-peer -peer is an important thing, but it can take longer to kind of get that growth where you know you have individuals willing to participate in that peer-to-peer -peer process. Also, um, just another thought on that, for kind of newer organizations, um, you know, obviously when you're trying to grow a donor base, a base donors are important but also just getting eyes on your organization. And I think that's one of the big values of peer-to-peer -peer as well, is that you know maybe not everyone that sees the campaign is in a position to donate or can donate now, but growing awareness and just getting engagement from new individuals, even if it's not in the form of a donation, that's what's gonna lay the groundwork for a strong donor base over time, is engagement overall. And engagement doesn't mean just individuals donating, if they're engaging with the posts you're making, with the content you're putting out, that can still be considered a win, even if it doesn't result in a donation initially. Okay, another question. Let me read this one. Ooh, that's a tricky one. Uh, I'm assuming this was a form not through Mighty Cause. Um, so you had a form issue where you had a membership program and charges didn't go through. So just so I understand, I'm assuming none of these actually, these individuals actually um, gained membership. I would, I would reach out to them and just kind of let them know that you're sorry the process didn't actually go through. Um, and if they're still interested, you now have a portal for it. That's a tricky one though. If you have phone numbers, that might be something you wanna directly call them because um, that's kind of a longer explanation. I would just try and engage them as much as you can because clearly they're interested in your organization if they wanted to sign up for membership but maybe having a clear campaign of how you can communicate, one, that the membership process did not work, and two, that they kind of need to redo that membership. Um, that's a very tricky one though. I would just try and communicate as directly as possible um, with those individuals. If it is just email, email each person directly. Um, you know, this would not be a situation to do kind of a blanket mass email. I would each do a personalized email to each individual and anyone you can call, I would call directly um, to let them know so that they understand what's going on. Um, how often do we have webinars? Generally, at least one to two a month. And you can check if you go to mightycause.com and click resources, we always have our webinar schedule up there. Um, so there's a large list as we kind of schedule them. You can keep checking, but we generally do two to three content webinars a month. Um, and then also we have a blog, if you're not aware, um, uh, the Mighty Cause, I think it's mightycause.blog. If you just Google Mighty Cause blog, you can find it. It has articles with similar content um, to these webinars. Um, and there is going to be, there's actually, there already is a blog post that kind of corresponds with this webinar as well um, that you can view. So I would check out our blog 
And then also just check out Mighty Cause resources and you can find kind of a list of the webinars we have scheduled, but we are continually doing webinars um, throughout every month throughout the year. Uh, do you have a recommendation on how frequently to email people, post your social in your end of year campaign? Um, I'll start with social media because that's a, a bit easier. Um, social media is going to be daily. Uh, the reason why I'm sure many of you are familiar with Facebook, Instagram, um, kind of the traditional social media platforms, Twitter. If you make a post on a social media platform, it is going to quickly get buried by other posts that users have. So at the very least, I would say daily, um, depending on what your capabilities are, you may want to make multiple posts throughout the day. Um, I also know there's ways you can kind of schedule posts on social media. So you wouldn't necessarily have to sit there and wait and release a new one. You could kind of schedule them maybe like on a, maybe three a day at specific uh, times when there's high traffic on social media. Um, but I've, social media would be a daily thing. And especially that last week, I would be bombarded bombarding content on social media to make sure everyone who's engaged with you sees that you are currently running a campaign. Um, email marketing, at least weekly though, this is end of year. I would do it pretty frequently. Um, but once again, you're going to want to change it up each time. You know, Don't just send the same message over and over. Kind of think of a strategy for messaging, you know, right now through maybe the next two weeks, like kind of the mid middle December, like softer messaging there, and then really, really engage hard the last week, I would send most of your emails in that last week or kind of ramp up how often you're sending them. Uh, but twice a week could be a good reference. Um, you could obviously go more or less than that. It does also depend on your donor base, how engagement works with email. Um, but pretty frequently, I mean, this is the time of year to not worry so much about doing too much um, is the way I would think about it. Like I wouldn't worry about over sending emails or over posting because it is end of year. This is the time to do that. Um, yes, the recording will be available and you should all get an email following the webinar to gain access to it. Um, and everyone will also get an email from me as well. So if you have any questions um, about the platform or about anything I talked about, you'll have a direct message from me you can reply to as well. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, if there's no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the webinar. But thank you all so much for attending. Um, and thank you to everyone who asked questions. I know um, a lot of these questions may have been similar questions for other organizations. So it's useful. This is useful information for everyone to hear. Once again, you'll get an email um, from me as well following the webinar. Um, so we can definitely correspond that way. Um, oh, Jenny, did you have a question? Uh, if, you, if you had a question, you can post it in the Q&A uh, chat bubble.
oh, is it in, oh, okay, this isn't in regular chat. Uh, we don't have a lot of engaging images. Where could we get more? Um, I would definitely create some um, for end of year. Now, this may mean just kind of taking pictures of individuals at the organization. Um, if you don't have any images of kind of like activities you're participating in, just get pictures of you guys, you know, working um, at the organization, having faces to the organization um, is that still a connection so that when a donor looks at it, they know, okay, these are actually people, you know, working at an organization. Um, you could also take a picture of any of your facilities, anything like that. Um, but I would create your own content as much as you can um, and just try and get, you know, sharp pictures that look really, really clean. A common one too, for kind of those, um, kind of main pictures for uh, on, a, on a campaign is maybe just get a picture, a group picture of everyone in the organization smiling, um, something like that. But really just getting either a face to the organization so a donor can look and see who is actually involved. Or, you know, if you have any activities during this month um, that you're participating in, going and getting photos as well, but kind of photos while y'all are working, um, a group photo, photos of what you guys are doing to help. Um, very, very crucial things for engaging, uh, engaging donors. So if you don't have any now, that's, that's no problem. I would just try and get the ball rolling on creating some of that. And then another thing organizations do, I kind of mentioned, you know, if you had a bunch of content, you could do an end of your montage, but you could also just do a video where, you know, maybe the director or anyone from the organization talks about what you guys accomplished this year, what your goals are as an organization, what you're looking to do in 2021. Um, so even if it's just someone sitting down and talking, that can also be engaging content just so donors can hear directly from the organization what the plans are um, versus just having it typed. You know, Having a direct person telling you what's going on um, is something that's definitely engaging um, versus just having typed up content. So to simplify that, I would really just say, I would create your own. It's gonna be more engaging if it's coming from the organization um, as much as possible. Other questions? Just wanna make sure I don't miss anyone. Okay, well, I think I covered everyone's questions. Anything else comes up, you can just shoot me an email directly. Um, if you're not as familiar with the platform, I don't know if everyone participated in Giving Tuesday as well. I'm happy to kind of set up a time to discuss um, the platform and how it can assist as well. So you guys will all be in an email from we, me and we can correspond that way too. If any questions come up that maybe you didn't think of during the webinar, feel free to give me a shout, happy to assist. But already I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up. So thank you all so much for your time and uh, good luck with your end of year campaigns. I hope everyone is super successful. All righty.